Hello, Harvard Square. I came here because I heard that the smartest people in the world would be here. That's what I'm told. Harvard, this is it, right? Because if I find that you guys aren't that smart, I'm going to have to go to Yale. And that's not good. That's just not going to be good. So, uh, my name is Mark. I'm from New Hampshire. I went to Harvard, actually. I uh, visited once and I got a souvenir. Um, I don't know if any of you actually attended the college. That's the hard way to do it. I think I did it the easy way. Um, sometimes it's a hard way and an easy way. Come on, gather around. I'm going to show you something on a painting. Um, I'm going to show off my kindergarten and first grade education with my paints and my little bit of spelling. But sometimes we try to solve some problems here. I have a problem that I would like. It's, 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 a, it's a riddle, if you would. You guys are smart. You can do it. I got four blue dots with three lines, how do you connect the dots with only three lines and have no spaces sticking out? How do you do that? Come on, we're the mathematicians and physicists. Some of these pe future people are going to be operating on my children. I want you to use your brains. Come on, let's do it. Three lines, no spaces. Now, whenever anybody has a problem in life, you got to ask yourself, this question. Look at these squares. When I when I want to know how do I cook a meal, how do I treat my wife? Well, if I don't know how to treat my wife, I just ask my wife and I do what she says. So whenever we have any kind of thing, we have to ask ourselves. I was an English major, by the way. That's why I put whom and not to who. Everybody agrees with me? To whom? To whom? Did I, are you impressed? Come on. Yes. Can we get a round of applause for that? No. We got no. grammar here. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Public school here. To whom? You. 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 When you got a problem. Who do you? Oh, I'm so short. It's hard to do it. I need a step stool. Boy, where do I, I need to go to the step stool person? To whom do you turn? Alright, so here's my problem. Who remembers it? Four dots, three lines, no spaces. To whom are you going to turn? Who's the people you go to? Who do you go to when you need to figure something out? Ah, oh, nice. You go to your, sp your spouse or your... Boyfriend or girlfriend? I don't want to. Oh, well, I can get you in trouble here. Um, well, what are some other people you go to? I, get, I get, tell you what, all of you are, go, are doing it right now. The first person anybody goes to is this. They go to. They go to everybody's favorite person. Oh. They go to themselves. Did you know that themselves? Is that everybody's favorite person? And so I ask myself, how am I going to do this? How am I going to take, what is it again? How many dots? Four dots, three lines, zero spaces. And so I ask myself, how am I going to do this? And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, here's what I'm going to do. This is myself. I came up with this. I'm going to try doing uh, one, one, two, three. Okay, three lines, I covered all four dots. Did I do, did I leave any, did I cover any of the spaces? No, I blew no. it, didn't I? How many spaces? Three. One. Dos. Trace. Three. I didn't do such a good job. So, what do you do when you're trying to solve something and you don't, you can't figure it out on yourself? Who do you go to next? Run. Hey, there you go, look at that. You go to th these people. You go to your, you go to your friends. So my friend says, I can help you with this. Four dots, three lines, no spaces. I got it. Check this out. My friend says, here's what you do. You remember Zorro? You go zip, zip, zip. Three lines, four dots covered, but how many spaces? <laughs> Two. Two. Oh, my friend let me down. Anybody have a friend let them down? I bet friends let me down. Yeah. Man! So then what do you do when you get really desperate? You do what nobody wants to do. 
you call because see, you're free, your friends are free. You gotta call someone who's not free. You gotta call this person. You might know what this who this person is. Expert. You call an expert, absolutely. And the expert says, okay, the clock is ticking. I charge uh, ninety dollars an hour. Maybe I went to Harvard, so I can charge hundred twenty dollars an hour. Maybe I went to Yale, charge two hundred dollars an hour then. And the expert says, I know what to do. Four dots, three lines, no spaces. Uno, dos, tres. All right, where's my bill? How the expert do? How many spaces? One. Man, even the expert couldn't get it right. Now. There is a problem that is much more important than how to, how to cover four dots with three lines and no spaces. By the way, I'll show you the answer. Check this out. Sometimes you got to go to the person who invented the, uh, the quiz. Now, I didn't invent the quiz, but I know about the, this quiz. Check this out. So how many lines we got here? One, two, three. How many lines? Three. Three. How many dots got covered? No. Four. 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 How many spaces are left? None. None. Donuts. Okay, what do we do? We thought outside the box, right? We thought outside the box. We went to the person who designed the quiz. I have a question for you that is much more important than how to cover four dots with three lines with no spaces. And that is this. How do we solve a problem that's called a sin problem? We all have this. In fact, our sin is so great that we don't like to talk about it. My guess is some of you would prove me right by walking away right now. You will prove me right by walking away because we don't like to talk about sin. Um, we're all going to die, 10 out of 10 people. Some people say you can avoid death and taxes. You know they're half right? Some people avoid taxes. Nobody avoids death. Okay? We're all going to die. In 200 years, everyone on this planet is going to die. And what's going to happen when we when we face God and we have a sin problem? Let me make sin real for you. Because sin is like one of those words, what does that mean? It's easy. Have you ever told a lie? If I lied to you, what would you call me? Liar. You call me a liar. Absolutely. Who here has never told a lie? And then, anybody with their hand up is a liar right now. <laughs> have we ever... Have we ever stolen something? If I asked you, have you ever stolen something? Now some people say, no, I've never stolen anything. And I say, well, you just said you're a liar. So how am I supposed to believe you? <laughs> Come on, you lost your credibility there. We, we have stolen, we have lied. God says that, that we should not use his name in vain. We hit our hand with a hammer. We don't say, oh, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> no, we say Jesus Christ with a bunch of adjectives. You know, we wouldn't even take Osama bin Laden's name and use it as a filth word to express disgust, but we take the maker of life who made us, and we use it as a filth word casually. The Bible says the Lord will not hold him guiltless, who uses his name in vain. Because of our sin, this is very serious, there is a separation between us and God. And that's where I want you to go to, to look to the answer of how do we solve this problem, the sin problem. You look to the maker, and the maker himself is this person right here, is God. God will give us the answer. And God said that here we are as humans, here he is, oh, I almost I forgot God's uh, God. Ah, grace. We'll talk about that in a sec. So, if God is separated from us because of our sin, we've sinned against him, all of us, there's none righteous, no, not one. So what, here's what human beings try to do. They say, I'll make it up to God. I'll be good. I'll try to be nice to homeless people. And I'll give to the poor. And I'll carry old ladies across the street whose name are Edna, even if they don't want to go across the street. And I'll, uh, I'll be nice. And I'll, uh, I'll buy Coca-Cola instead of Pepsi. I'll buy Pepsi to a boat. And we do whatever we can to try to be a nice person. And that is religion. That is what, that's man trying to make their way to God. Every religion in the world is man trying to earn their way to God. Whether it be Buddhism, whether it be Muslim, Islam, whether it be secular humanism or our ownism. I used to be a religious person and I had Marxism. Not Marxism, although you will find that in many of the classes here at Harvard. I, uh, I, I, I'm a Marxist. I follow my own way. That's, that's what we do. 
but you can't get up to God that way because we've sinned against Him. It would be like a, 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 a murderer going to a judge and saying, Judge, I know I've murdered a child, but I want you to know how many children I didn't murder. There's way more children I didn't murder than I did. And I've never stolen a car, and I've never raped anybody. So you gotta let me go, right? You know, let's forget about this murder, you know, murdering five children business. No, that's not just. If God let people go, if a judge let people go, he'd be, he'd be a monster. God is not a monster. He will not let anyone go. We have all broken his laws, all of us. And we know that if you listen to your conscience, you know that's true. You know it. And you know that we try to make up for it in our own ways. Here is the best news anyone will ever tell you, and there's no tuition payment at all required. I'm going to give this to you for free. And that is that God came to us. He came down to us. The Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that Jesus Christ himself, God of human form, became flesh. And he carried to us. And he was perfect. He never sinned. He always did what was loving. He always did what was kind. He never stole, never coveted. What would you do to such a wonderful man? Would you put him on a duck boat and, 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 and bring him down you know, and, so that everybody can have a parade for him? Like we do for Tom Brady, and hopefully we will this coming football season. For Tom Brady, I'm hoping I'll, wait, let's hope. Okay? Did we do that? Did we do that for Jesus Christ? Did we make a man of the year? No. You know what we did? Because the, because human beings, we hate the light. And that's why many people left. Notice how people were hanging around. But as soon as I started talking about Jesus, they left. It's predictable. It happens every time. Because Jesus Christ, we hate the light. So we took Jesus. This perfect man. And even though he was not a murderer, we treated him like a murderer. He was not a thief. We treated him like a thief. He was not anything but loving. The nails and, and the nails and bloodshed were not enough to put a crown of thorns on his head to make fun of him. This perfect man. If ever anyone didn't deserve something, it was that. And let me tell you this. Jesus could not die on the cross because he was captured by the Romans. Before the foundation of the world, it was his plan to do this. In fact, the prophet Moses, 1,000 years before Jesus. Some people have asked me, yeah, how do we know the Bible's true? Here's how. A thousand years before this happened, Moses said, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Okay, that's vague. Got it. Let's get more specific. 800 years before Jesus died on the cross, King David in the Bible, Psalm 22, please look it up. Don't ever believe me. Believe what the Bible says said that the perfect sacrifice of God would have his hands and feet pierced. And it, just, and it described crucifixion with his tongue being cleaved to, the, to, the, to his throat. And that's exactly how people die. They suffocate when they crucify. This was, this was described 800 years before Jesus and crucifixion wasn't even, in, wasn't even invented yet. That's how we know that the Bible is God's word. 300 other prophecies about Jesus Christ. You can believe God's word. But you know what? Many people died on the cross. Historians tell us hundreds of thousands of people did. But Jesus did something that no one else did. On the third day, this is my favorite part. On the third day, he rose from the dead, defeating death. Unbelievable. Let me tell you this. You may trust your professor, you may trust your friends, your experts, your mom, your dad. But you trust, this is what I know with my education. Remember, I went to Harvard. Is that if ever a man is dead, for three days, and on their own power, because in John chapter 2, Jesus said that you destroy my body in three days, I will raise it up. So he raised himself from the dead. If ever somebody raises himself from the dead, listen to that person. That's kind of a, that's a good thing, a good rule of thumb there. Jesus said that there's two things we must do, we must do, in order to have our sins forgiven. And the two things are this, and I love this, God's so good. He made it so that even a school child or someone from Harvard could understand that. Two T's. The first T is turn. That's it. We turn from our sin. We stop justifying it. We stop saying, well, what is stealing? Is stealing like, you know, taking bread to live? You know, people say that. Is lying like, you know, I say, yeah, your hair doesn't look nice? That's justifying yourself. We know we've stolen, we've lied, we've broken God's law. Admitting, you say, God, I'm a sinner. Repentance, that's what that is. And you trust. You don't trust in yourself. You don't trust in your baptism. You don't trust in your church. You don't trust in your mom. You don't trust in your five pillars. You don't trust in, in, your, in your book of Moses. You trust in Jesus Christ, the only perfect sacrifice. 
uh, his badness, our badness goes on him, his goodness goes on us. Now I work, I don't do this for a living, although I'd like to, uh, but I work for a very large mutual fund company in Boston, I can't say their name because I said I wouldn't, uh, but you know who they are, and if I told you, but I won't, I'm in trouble. And they make trades, they trade stocks and bonds and stuff, and they make, you know, if they do well, they make a good trade. Well, I want to tell you about the best trade ever. Your sin, my sin, goes to Jesus, and he trades his righteousness to you. If you turn and trust. And here's how you remember that. Every time you see a T for the rest of your life, there's a T right there, there's a T in all kinds of things. Harvard University T. Every time you see a T, I want you to remember the first number that begins with a T is two. And there's two T's you must do. Turn and trust. I can promise you this based on the Word of God. You do that, then God will forgive you. Not because you're a good person, but because you're a bad person who's been forgiven by a very good God. That's called grace. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much. Um, and please consider these things. I have a card here because I don't want you to believe me. Can you believe that? After all that, don't believe me. I want you to believe the Bible. This has what the Bible says about sin, salvation, heaven, hell, most important things that you can learn. It's not what should I major in. It's how do I get right with God. So please, come and take one of these and, uh, and check it out. Make sure what I'm saying is true. Talk to some of my friends. And if you have a Bible, please read it. There's never been any book that's been published more than that. Check it out. Even if it's to make fun of it, just read it. You may be surprised. Thank you so much.